Hello everyone and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to turn this into this. People have been asking me to make tutorials for a really long time and I've always said no because there is a certain journey, a certain set of skills, tools, materials that I've spent a really long time collecting and I just couldn't think of a way to share that information with people in a way that would be effective and that you could actually learn from. But I've spent a lot of time thinking about that and reconsidering that assumption and I think that I've found a way to take you all on a journey through my process, one that will be effective in teaching you how to make miniatures the way that I make miniatures. And if you follow along for this entire journey, the goal is that at the end of it, you will have your own fully functional miniature kitchen. So welcome to part one of our tutorial miniature kitchen, Tom Brown Creates Making Journey. Now one of the goals that I have for this series is to teach you how to make these things with an escalating set of tools, beginning with things that you could find around the average household. So today, the main tools that we're going to be using are needle nose pliers. Now these are probably my most used tool, and I would say the number one most important tool to use when you're making miniatures. So if you don't have a set of needle nose pliers, this is the investment to make for this video. And the other main tool that we're going to be using is a pair of scissors. The scissors that I use in my miniature practice are these Ulfa shears, and they're a little bit beefier. They can cut a little bit uh, thicker of a material, but today I'm going to try using just a cheap pair of dollar store scissors to make this project so that there is no barrier to entry for anybody who wishes to follow along. Now the other two things that you're going to need for this project, a tin can, make sure that it is not like a pop can or something like that. This must be uh, a can used for canning and a safety pin. and just a regular sewing pin. So the first step is to begin processing this tin can. Make sure that you wash it. And this is probably the most challenging part of the build. This is gonna be the hardest single cut. And uh, if you're a kid and you're watching this and you think that you might like to do this, I would suggest consulting with your parent first, maybe asking for their help with some parts of this because it is potentially going to be dangerous. You might cut yourself. In fact, I already did cleaning out this tin can, so be careful. Now you'll notice there's a seam around the top of this can. That's the first thing that we're going to have to crack. So take your needle nose pliers, grab the edge of the seam, and then you can just work them back and forth. See, it doesn't take much and it will split. So the next thing that you'll want to do using your scissors, just get them in that split and make a single cut down. So we have our single cut. We're going to take the needle nose pliers and we're just going to bend this back. So the reason that we've done this is so we can get our scissors on this flat part of the metal. So take your scissors and what I want you to do now is to cut along this line right here all the way around. Remember, be very careful. You're creating a sharp edge here. 
don't cut yourself. Keep your fingers clear, pay attention, and uh, if you have any doubt, ask somebody for help. Now, at about this point during the cut, you may find your scissors starting to lodge, and the cut be uh, begins to get difficult. So what I would suggest doing is, again, take your needle nose pliers, catch up to where you are in the cut, twist through that rim, and then just cut this piece off. We're just gonna take it right off. So now we should be able to finish this cut without too much difficulty. So right towards the end of the cut, you might find it beginning to get difficult again. What I've done is I've just gone and bent this part back. And that lets me get right at it with the scissors. Okay, so I've completed that part and what I'm left with is two pieces of relatively thin metal that still have a bead running along this side. So what I want you to do next is to take your scissors and remove the beads. Okay, so now we have two really nice uh, thin, flexible pieces of metal. And we're ready to move on to the next step. So this step is going to decide how long the set of tongs you make will be. Okay, so the next step is going to decide how long the tongs that we make are. Now, what I recommend in terms of length is anywhere between one to one and a half inches, somewhere in that zone. That's going to give you enough length to grab foods without being so long that it becomes unwieldy. Uh, now what I normally use for measuring is this pair of calipers, but a ruler or a measuring tape would also be fine. Also, you can just guess. That would be fine too. Now let's go to metric here. So this is between one and a half inches. I'm gonna go to four centimeters. I'm gonna take my scissors and cut these down to four centimeter lengths. We've got four really nice pieces of metal right now. Really what we need is two. Two really nice pieces of thin, flexible, it's still kind of strong metal. Now I'm gonna show you the next step. And this is the crucial step, but it is also a little bit of guesswork and creativity. Uh, there's not an exact template for how to shape this, but I'm going to draw it right now and I'm going to show you how you might draw your own. Now a tong, when you flatten it out, is shaped like this. And this is just a very rough sketch that I've made here, but we're going to do a much more precise job of transcribing this basic idea onto the metal. I'm going to break this up into four pieces, uh, so quarters. The top quarter is the top part of the shape. So the top quarter and the bottom quarter. are going to make up the two parts of this shape. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to square up the edges on this piece of metal. And I'm going to make one of them slightly wider than the other one. Okay, I've just switched up my line to a sharpie because it shows a little bit better. So I'll familiarize with myself with the quarter mark. And I'm just going to cut in a little bit on both sides. You see that? Just starting the cuts. Next thing I'm going to do is take the corners off of both of those cuts. And the metal should just flake off like that. And we'll be left with something that looks like this. 
Now, we haven't gotten this all the way into our central line. We want to try to get it into something that has a width that is closer to, I would say, about... Okay, so we're gonna use this as a template to create the rest of the cuts on both of the pieces. So what I'm gonna do first is line these up just like this. Let's make sure it's nice and centered. And then I'm gonna use my Sharpie to indicate where that cut should be. Now you can actually take this, flip this, like so, and delineate, mark our second cut. So we have basically the whole template right here. So I have both of these cuts made, and I'm going to use this second piece to make the marks back on the first piece so that I can make that second cut. I've got both of these pieces cut. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Sharpie and draw a line from this corner to this corner. So this is the part of my practice where things aren't exact and we have to make some estimations. So what we're going to do is looking at these corners here, we need to cut the extra material off of the side. And what we want to do is we want to leave enough material that we can fold it over and when you fold it, they'll meet in the middle and they'll create a triangle. But you're going to have to use your brain to decide exactly how much that is. It should be about half of the width of how wide you want your central part to be. So I'm just going to do it. You can watch and see where I cut and you can use that as a guidepost for yourself. And if you make a mistake, you can always start over. I have a thousand times, so let's do it. So I will say that you're going to have to kind of angle your scissors to get them in there, but they should fit and cut just fine. And you can see once I've made that cut, how it roughly followed the Sharpie lines that I just had you draw. It's kind of a one good guidepost, potential guidepost for making those cuts. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to make that part. And how we're going to do this, once again armed with our Sharpie, we are going to draw a dot at the very tip, right in the center. And from that dot, we are just going to estimate and draw a blobby oval. Now, taking our scissors, we're going to cut out around that blobby oval. So two blobby ovals, you notice that neither of them is perfect. That doesn't really matter at this point in the build. Uh, they're going to be shaped a little bit further. You can see this has teeth. So I'm going to show you next how I make the teeth. Uh, this isn't necessarily the only way to do it. Maybe you can come up with a better way of doing this part, but this is how I do it. On a piece of metal, I'm just going to score the very tip. And then in equal increments from there down. I don't know how well that's coming across, but you can see roughly where I've scored the tip. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a small snip at each line that I've indicated. No more than one and a half to two millimeters deep, just enough to create a little tiny snip. So 
So now with these snips, take the corners and snip those out, trying to create as rounded of a shape as you possibly can, just like this. From here, you're going to grab your sandpaper and just round these out a little bit. Now repeat the same steps on your second piece. Okay, both of these are shaped. The next thing that we're going to want to do is to start to deal with these. And what I want you to do is to round out the top corners first. Sandpaper. So we have nice rounded edges here now. We're getting pretty close to uh, switching tools and coming to a much more challenging part in this build. So I would say that if you've been having trouble with what you've been doing so far, this would be a good time to go ask somebody for help. Uh, if you have been doing fine, then that's great. Just keep following along. I have grabbed my needle nose pliers and we're gonna need them for this next step. What we're gonna do is we are going to decide where we want to make the bend in this shape down the side. So take my pliers and I'm just gonna line them up basically with this and this corner. Once you've got it lined up in a way that you're happy with, you're going to take this and using the needle nose pliers, you're going to bend up and repeat that procedure on the second side. So after those first bends, this is what it looks like. And you can see this side didn't get bent quite as far as this side. So I'm just going to use my pliers and I'm going to even it all out. Now, we have an open channel on the bottom here. And what I want to do is I want to use the pliers and kind of put them over on an angle like this. And very gently, I'm going to bend both of these inner parts so that they line up. So you can see this thing is starting to take shape. The next part is a little bit more uh, creative and artistic. We are going to shape the hand of the tong. And the way that this goes is that I use my needle nose pliers once again, and I'm going to grab each one of these teeth one at a time, and I'm just going to bend them in. Just like that. So I bent one side of this into more or less the final shape, but I've left the other side unbent. And this is because I need to use this side to line up with this side so that everything fits together correctly. And I need to punch some holes in this piece. Now normally the tool that I would use for this job is an awl or a drill with a very tiny drill bit. My awl right here, very easy punch holes, but because I'm trying to do this with materials that uh, are commonly found just lying around the household, I'm instead going to use a thumbtack. <coughs> Once again, we are going to grab our Sharpie, and I'm just going to make two dots pretty close to the outside of this shape up here. I'll let you have a good look at them. Again, this is kind of guesstimation on my part. This is not exact. And I am going to take this and I'm going to punch two holes in it. Right where those green dots were. So the next thing that you can do, take your sandpaper and sand the burr off the back of these holes. And these holes need to be wide enough for your pin to go through. And we are going to take our thumbtack and we are just going to go through the back of the hole and work it around through both of them. We're just widening the hole. 
And we need to make these holes wide enough for our pin to fit through. Pretty good. Yep. Wide enough for the pin to fit through, small enough that the back of the pin won't pull through. So this next step is crucial. We are going to bend this piece, but we need to bend it so that it fits just over this one. So this top part needs to be slightly, ever so slightly wider. Barely, barely, barely wider, but just a little bit wider. And this is where you got to use your brain. So using that big old brain, I'm going to line up my first bend. And I'm just going to check it against this piece. And use that to get an idea of where I should make the second bend. The bend is done and you can see the fit. It's very tight. Now one thing I'm having an issue with here that you may need to correct in your piece See how long these are? And when I slide them inside here, they're making the spacing at the top of this a little bit awkward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shave a little bit of material off of these. Not too much, just a very small amount. Okay, that's better. <laughs> See how they're a little tighter on this side. So the next thing that we're going to do is using our original holes as a register. We're just going to poke through with our thumbtack through the hole and scratch around. Just scratch around. And you'll see on this now scratched into it is where this hole needs to be. So this part is going to be a little bit difficult. This is probably the most difficult single part of this build. And I'm lucky because I have a studio full of scrap wood that fits perfectly on the inside of this piece. Now you may not have access to a studio full of such amazing scrap. So you can use, uh, for example, some cardboard. Take a piece of cardboard, fold it, and then slip it inside of here. And you can use that as the backing to punch your holes. Okay, my holes are punched. And you can see that these bends have just kind of deflected a little bit from being punched. So I'm going to use my needle nose pliers and I'm just going to bend these back flat. And then using the thumbtack, I'm just going to widen these holes yet again. Grab the sandpaper and just sand off the burrs on the inside of these holes. So I've yet to finish my folds on this piece. I'm just going to do that now. And then once again, bending all of those teeth in. Okay, so now we can test fit. Take our pin, slide these together, and if everything has gone according to plan, we should be able to slide the pin through the holes, just like that. And our tongs should open and close. And they do. Okay. Looking good. Now, this is what makes this build uh, a little more special in my opinion. and take our safety pin. And we're going to harvest this spring from the back of it. So your needle nose pliers, most needle nose pliers will have wire clippers on the end and clip about that much off of the safety pin. Now if your needle nose pliers do not have clippers, you can still do this. Just grab them where you want them to break off grab this side of it and then just bend it back and forth, the metal will stress and it will break. So now we have a spring that we can put into our tongs. So take them apart, 
And what you want to do is you want to take the safety pin and slip it down inside of here. And into here. And this is tricky. This might take you a few tries. But holding it all together, reassemble your pin. And this is crucial. It has to go through the circle at the top of the spring. You can see this step is even a little bit tricky for me, so don't get frustrated. Just play around with it until you've got it. There we go. Threaded. Now, when we go to use our tongs, they spring back. So this is an opportunity now that you're test fitting it. Just make sure that everything lines up. So you can see when I go to close my tongs, the tips don't quite perfectly line up. So what I'm going to do is just using my fingers, first I'm going to make a slight bend oh, right at the tip so that they're just bent in a little bit like that. And then using the needle nose pliers, I'm going to go to this end and I am just ever so gently going to compress it. Now that just tightens the whole mechanism up. So now you can see my tips are lined up and I can use my tongs as tongs. We need to take our pin and using our needle nose pliers, we need to bend it as close as we possibly can to the tongs. So what we're going to do is this. We are going to go and give it a bend. Now I've got my bend started. You can see it's at about 45 degrees. I'm going to take my needle nose pliers. I'm going to clip the pin. And then I'm just going to finish the bend. You may need to put your needle nose pliers right up inside and grab it like this. There we go. Now they're not going back through. And our tongs are complete. So the finishing step, I'm just going to take my sandpaper and I'm just going to run it over all of the remaining edges making sure there's no sharp edges sticking out. And I'm going to take it over to the sink and I'm just going to wash it with some hot water. That'll help get the Sharpie off and clean out any sort of um, metal shavings, scrap files, anything like that that may still be present. So I'll be right back. So the reason that I chose tongs as the first thing that I showed you how to make is because they're essential to miniature cooking. We have big hands, and when we're making tiny things, we need something much smaller that we can grab them with. So using these tongs, we can effortlessly grab tiny little pieces of food. And don't feel pressured to use uh, just a tin can as your metal. You can use any kind of metal that you might find lying around that is at least this strong. Uh, so an old tea tin might work really well. Any kind of scrap metal that you can find um, Scrap aluminum works really nicely. Don't feel pressured though to do exactly what I do because I didn't learn how to do this from anybody. I taught myself and I'm trying to teach you not only how to make these things, but I'm trying to teach you the skills so that you can figure out how to make other things for yourself. Now out of this, hopefully you have started to build a toolbox as well. Needle nose pliers essential. They will be your most used tool. Scissors. They're very important. And if you can spend a little bit more money on it, get these ones. The Ulfa multi-purpose scissors. Some kind of a measuring tool, be it a ruler, calipers, measuring tape, anything is good. 
sandpaper. This is an essential piece to making most miniature projects. Um, you'll want something in and around the 150 grit, but even better if you can have 100, 150, and then something much finer like a 400 grit so that you can sand things to a reasonable finish. And now that we've started building this toolkit, we're going to be able to use it in future videos to make ever more difficult and complex pieces so that at the end of this process you can be up and running making your own uh, miniature dishes. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate uh, you sticking around and if you did attempt to make this tutorial please uh, leave a comment with a video of your own finished product. I'd love to see it. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time.